As far as covalent bonds go, there are two major types of covalent bonds to be aware of, and those are the sigma bond and the pi bond. The sigma bond is always the first bond formed, and it's created by the end of one orbital cloud overlapping with the end of another. It could be between an sp3 orbital and an s orbital. It could be between an sp orbital and an sp3. But recognize that this will always be the first bond form. So if you have a single bond, then that's a sigma bond. And if you have a double bond or triple bond, the first one of those that was formed is a sigma bond. And also recognize that the sigma bond always is made by orbitals that at least have some s character. So it could be just a plain s orbital, or it could be a hybridized sp something orbital. But it will always involve two things with s character for anything that you'll encounter on the MCAT. And this is a very strong type of bond. There's direct overlap there, and so also know that the sigma bond by itself is very strong. Now the pi bond will be the second or third bond that is formed, and that is produced only by p orbitals. And so if other things hybridize, but you need a second or third bond, then you need to keep those p orbitals intact the way that they are. And the pi bond involves sort of a shared region between adjacent p orbital clouds. And so the actual shape of it is somewhat unusual, and perhaps you could look up an image online or something for that. But the general gist of it is that you have two p orbitals that are parallel. And this is true, for example, if you end up having triple bonds, you'll have one set that forms the first pi bond, and that will be parallel like this, and perhaps the second one will be parallel in a different angle, but they have to be directly next to each other in order for there to be a shared region. The pi bond is a weaker type of bond, but because it's added on to the sigma bond, which is always the first one formed, any double or triple bond has both a sigma and a pi bond, and that means it's going to be very, very strong. And so double and triple bonds are very strong, but the pi bonds themselves are not a strong part of that bond. And as you move into organic chemistry, you'll notice that oftentimes the first bond broken will be a pi bond because of its general weakness. But recognize the overall framework and that S's are always involved in these sigma bonds, and also realize how strong it is, and recognize that you need parallel p orbital clouds in order for a pi bond to be formed. And I think once you understand that, then you should be good to go for MCAT questions that test specifically the types of bonds that you're dealing with.